God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. I am extremely excited to be here with all of you. And I believe that we're going to have such an amazing time in the presence of God. It's been a while before I've done any of this revealed, but this week my goal is to give you so much and the week after, especially that it's my birthday month, it's going to be an amazing time. Yeah, we're, we, are, we are going to learn so much and so much is going to be delivered unto you by the grace of God. So I want you to share this and share this as many times as you can. Let somebody know that will let somebody know that will let somebody know that Prophet Lovi is live and our lives will never be the same again because of the Lord Jesus. What we're going to discuss is going to be extremely profound and it's going to help you to understand, um, understand a lot of the things that are happening around you that you may have not known. So share this, let somebody know, that will let somebody know, that will let somebody know that uh, the prophet is live and we are going to get started. So uh, let me know if you're ready, type number one, if you have shared, and then we are going to get started. I want this to be shared as much as possible because this is going to cause somebody to truly be elevated spiritually not only in, in you, you know, our elevation in God is always reflected by the progress that is seen in our life. And the progress I'm speaking about is not buying a new car, buying a new house, buying this or gaining this, even though those things are good and you ought to have them because it's God's will. But we measure progress by the ability to fulfill our destiny. Whatever God set us on earth to do, are we able to fulfill it? If we are fulfilling that, then we are winning. And evil spirits, unclean spirits, devils, demons, their great desire is to stop you from fulfilling your destiny. Not from buying a new car. Not from getting a new house. Not from being the, the most successful person. They will give you all that if it means that you don't fulfill your spiritual destiny. So I want you to pay attention because this will be beneficial to you. And uh, I want you to interact with me online and even those who are here because I, 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 I don't want you to sit on your mouth. I want you to be ready to go in because it's going to be such a blessed time. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, let's get into it. This is going to be nice. Let's get into it. Now, I'm going to teach you the difference, now the word numa simply means spirit, but we are dealing with unclean spirits. Now, you have to understand that there is a difference between being possessed by a spirit and a spirit simply being around you. I'll say that one more time. There is a big difference between a spirit being inside of you and a spirit being around you. These are completely two distinct experiences. And I'm going to say it one more time. There is a big difference between having a spirit living inside of you and a spirit being around you. A lot of you don't need deliverance from a demon inside of you. You need, a diff, a, a de, you need deliverance from a demon that is around you. I'm going to say that one more time. Many of you don't need deliverance from a demon inside of you. Majority of you need deliverance from a demon around you. You can have a demon around you. The demon will not stop you from going to church. The demon will not stop you from praising God. The demon will not stop you from singing to God. 
It doesn't affect him because he's not inside of you. Okay, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Uh, I know you guys are asleep here. Let's say grace and go home. I, I don't think you're, you're really listening to me. So there's, if a spirit simply is around you, that demon knows the seasons to come to you and to cause problems to you because he knows you cannot cast him because he's not inside of you. A good example, a good example is this. At no time was the Lord Jesus ever possessed by a demon, nor was it possible. Jesus is in the midst of fasting. Shadabakaya, praying and fasting in the wilderness. And guess who comes to visit him? Satan himself. Satan is present where the Lord Jesus is while he's in prayer. And the devil is able to tempt him. All Jesus could do was resist him. All the Lord Jesus could do was resist him. On the last day of his temptation, the Bible says that Jesus said, Be gone, you shall not uh, tempt the Lord your God. The Bible says, then angels came to comfort him, and the devil departed from him until another time. So you have to understand that demons... Are you guys monitoring the comments, please? Can somebody do that? There's, a, there's some, some scammers that are on there. Like, make sure you're monitoring that. As a child of God, you need to understand that if you're not spiritually sharp, demons will build a camp around your life. They will not enter you because they know if they enter you, you will catch them. But they know they can build a camp around your life because you're not alert. The Bible says it this way. It says, the angel of the Lord encompass them that fear him. So there is a certain lifestyle that allows an angel to encompass you. Now, that shows you the tremendous ability of angelic beings is that one angel is able to surround your whole life, one angel. Now you tell me, if you're not a God-fearing believer, do you think it's impossible for a demon to encompass your life? Because if the angels of God are not encompassing your life, somebody is definitely is because there is no void spiritually. Are you sure you're here? Online, if you're here, type number one, because I'm trying, to <clears throat> I'm trying to go through this as fast as I can. I'm still recovering from a cold from London. I don't like the winter. I don't like anything like that. Uh -uh. I'm too African. <laughs> the, the tropical weather is still in me. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I hear you. Okay, I see your, your present. Now, now, capture this by the Spirit of God. So I am going to teach you how to detect one specific spirit. Amen. Because there are many spirits, but all of them have different effects, but there is one that is very common to everyone. I am going to specifically address unclean spirits. Specifically, we are going to deal with an unclean 
spirit. Specifically, we are going to deal with unclean spirits. Let's grab the Bible. So first of all, let me show you difference of spirits. Uh, not to take too much time so that you understand what I'm saying. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 16. No, uh, actually, 1 Timothy chapter 4 from verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4. From, actually, can we give um, uh, Ruth the, the mic to read? Oh, you have one. No, you keep one, and then let's give Ruth another one. Are you, oh, you are reading today? Yeah. Are you a good reader? I think so. Okay. Think. You're really quick. You're quick to give up your place like that. I mean, uh, you're requesting for it. No, 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 no. I didn't know you had one. Okay, give Ruth that one. Okay, so you read this one. Let's see how you're going to do. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> don't, get, don't ever give up your post that easy. Amen. I ah, never give up your place that easy. Amen. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, let's hear it. Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 4 from verse 1. Uh -huh. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times, some, some shall depart from the faith, mm -hmm. giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Stop right there. By this verse, notice it is the Holy Spirit speaking. The Bible is saying, now the Spirit speaks express, uh, expressingly. What did, what's the word that he used there? Expressly. Uh -huh. Expressly, meaning that the Spirit of God is really trying to tell you something here. Hmm. In the later days, some shall heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Notice, by this verse, you already know a seducing spirit is not a demon or a devil. Pay attention. It says, some will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Mm -hmm. It is separating a seducing spirit from a devil. Mm. Are you guys really yes. hearing me? Yes. Yes. Is somebody hearing me? Yes. There is a difference between a seducing spirit and a devil. Devils are fallen ones. Are you hearing me? Devils, or, or what, what in Greek we call diabolos, or that is Satan himself. Devils are fallen ones, but specifically Satan himself and what are called the princes of hell. These ones fall in what we call devils. Is somebody hearing me? Yes. This is Satan and the ones that rule with him. The Beelzebub, the Apollyon, all these are called princes of hell and Lucifer is their head. Mm. These ones are called devils. Mm. Only devils give doctrines. If a devil is over a city, if a devil is over a country, if a devil is over a continent, that devil will produce a culture that everyone that endures that land will follow. And it will be enforced by seducing spirits and demons and unclean spirits. Is this making sense so far? Yes. Ah, you're too quiet for me. Let's, oh, yes. let's finish. I don't think you guys want to learn. Yes. Maybe the people online want to learn. If you want to learn, just step number one. I'm trying to make sure you can catch up and you can follow me. Is somebody hearing me? So, devils, their primary obje objective is to give you, 
is to give you doctrines that you should live by. They write the law that you should live by. That is why good is now considered evil and evil is considered mm. good. Who changed it? Devils change fashion, <laughs> influence language. Dang. Yes. Wow. They know how to make this thing run. That is their primary desire. They infiltrate governments. They infiltrate even churches. That's why we have churches that believe crazy things. You're like, how can you be a man or a woman of God with a Bible and this is what you believe? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Okay, Ruth, are you ready? You had one hiccup. In your reading. I did. I'm joking. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> okay, let me give you another one. I'm just trying to give you things that you can reference so that you know what I'm saying Amen. to be true. Revelations chapter 18, verse number 1 and 2. Verse number 1 and 2. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, mm -hmm. having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Mm -hmm. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, mm -hmm. Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit. Ooh. You notice that? Devils are separated from foul spirits. Why? Because devils are the superiors. Are you hearing me? Devils wow. and foul spirits. And then keep going. And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, why is the unclean spirit here referred to as a bird? Because unclean spirits don't operate regionally. They are not bound by a region. They can move around. Mm. And I will show it to you. Jesus said when an unclean spirit comes out of a person, it goes to dry places and looks for rest. Then he says, nah, I am going to go back to the same house that I left. Mm. Notice he's the only guy that is roaming around. He can jump places. Strong men are bound, they are cast into the pit. This one is bound, this one goes there. Unclean spirits, they always circle around people's lives. That's why they are the most common evil ones that every one of us needs to be aware of so that our life can be secured by God. I can give, keep giving you more. Let me give you more so that you just understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ezekiel forty four twenty three. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane mm -hmm. and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. Oh. Notice, an unclean spirit can be around you and you will not know that something is unclean. If you need discernment, it's something spiritual, not carnal. Is this making sense? No. Uh, let me go deep into this thing. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, how do we know?
How do we know that an unclean spirit is around you? Now, don't confuse. I'm not saying an unclean spirit inside of you. I'm talking about around you. There is a big difference. Is somebody hearing me? There is a big, big difference. Now, all diabolical spirits, no matter the power, no matter the class, have the ability to be in you. And whoever is inside of you has a different way of messing you up. But I'm specifically going to speak about unclean spirits and the effects of them being around you. I'm not going to address them being inside of you today. I'm simply speaking about them being around you. Number one. The nature of unclean spirits is primarily to cause sickness. The primary manifestations of this spirit is to cause sickness, but usually is diseases that have to do with what is called cleansing. When an unclean spirit has been around your vicinity a lot, not inside of you, but around you, the first thing you will notice is skin problems. All right, let me keep quiet. Huh? No, you're helping. You're helping. That is why Jesus never said rebuke leprosy. He said cleanse the lepers. You are only cleansed if you're dirty. Mm-hmm. Cleanse the lepers, heal the sick, and cleanse the lepers. Notice, the process is different. When an unclean spirit is around you, they will cause a lot of skin issues. Some of you suffer from suffer from Acne that cannot be fixed. Many times it is not genetic, even though it can be. Most of the time, that spirit's desire is for you to see yourself worthless. Of no value. You will never be loved. You are ugly. Your skin is not beautiful. His great desire Now am I saying all skin issues? No. I'm talking about chronic strange ones. Let me tell you a story because this happened to me. When my father had died, I was around 12 years old. My father died when I was 8. I was around 12 years old. We were living in a place called South Sea. And uh, me and a friend were coming from school. Actually, no, I wasn't 12. I was 10. Me and a friend were coming from school, and we were playing outside. And uh, on our way from school, we were walking from school. And we passed by this 
Um, you know, in Africa, people would just be planting things on the side of their house, whatever. It's very different from the Western world. And when we were walking, we decided to like pick some fruits from this person's garden. And when I was about to pick the fruit, the voice of the angel that was with me told me, don't do it. This is not a good place. But my friend was like, no, just get it for me. So I was very good at climbing trees. In fact, I have many scars to show for it. So I just grabbed and I gave it to him. But when I touched the fruit and I pulled it from the person's garden, it was a mango. All of a sudden, I felt like a burning sensation went over my skin. All of a sudden, I developed a skin problem that was like boils over my body that was like pussy. I went to the hospital, they couldn't fix it. I got shots for it, they could not fix it. An unclean spirit had hit me, never entered me. I just passed by where they were and I touched what I was not supposed to touch. What I'm telling you, if I lie, may the Lord Jesus take my life. I'm telling you the truth before God, who I stand before. I remember my older brother, John, took me to the hospital, all these things, and there was nothing that could be done. I remember I was taken to a hospital. Everyone that has lived in Kenya, in especially a place called uh, um, Nairobi West, knows what I'm talking about. There was an Indian doctor called, uh, they called him Nanav, the, the place was called Nanavat. I don't remember clearly why they called it that, but I went to this doctor. I was taken there. And when I got to the doctor, he had a woman who, by the spirit I knew, she practiced spirituality, but it was not of God. And when they were trying, you know, they were popping the, imagine they had to take things to pop them and put things on me like that, because they gave me shots and whatever, nothing was working. This woman said, ah, ah, and she said it in Swahili. Oh, he touched what he should not touch. She knew because of the practices. And I overheard that. Wow. Ah. <laughs> I overheard that. The Lord is my witness. I thought of it when I went home that night. Pastor Benihin was his first crusade in Kenya. I left home without anybody knowing. I walked to a place called Uhuru Park by myself. In fact, when I got home, my older brother whooped me <laughs> because I went for like maybe 10 miles from home because my thing was when I disappeared, I was where God is. When I got to that meeting, I remembered what the woman said was echoing in my ear. And I said, Lord Jesus, please cleanse me from what I touched. I pray, Lord, have mercy on me. Please cleanse me from what I touched. Fire came from heaven, fell on me. This is why any, listen, you can say anything you want to say about Pastor Benihim. And I'm sure he's made mistakes. That man is a man of God. And I know the old man. I know him pretty well. We've spent a lot of time with him. The fire fell on me. And the Lord Jesus is my witness. And I felt like I was burning. I felt like I was burning. I didn't even know. Because that thing used to itch so bad. The woman that was standing next to me in this crusade of thousands taught me said, Kijana, 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 meaning young boy, young boy, young boy. Look at your skin, look at your skin, look at your skin. I, look at, I looked at my skin and they had all disappeared. There wasn't even a scar. Wow. 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 
I was cleansed. Because I remembered something that somebody said that wasn't even a believer. Gave me insight that I didn't know. I believe it was part of my journey to learn. Are you hearing me? Some of you who are experiencing some weird rushes, things like that, the moment the unclean spirit leaves your life, those rushes disappear. I remember, um, I remember um, one of my daughters actually told her that, uh, what, what's her, she actually said that, she, she actually told me that, um, <coughs> um, Anisha, Anisha used to have like, you remember a weird rush on her foot? And she did a testimony. Then I asked, she said, oh, yeah, remember you're preaching about unclean spirits, this and this and this. She had like a weird rush that would never go away. The moment I, I was speaking, like, you know how when we are offline and people are sitting and they are listening, and I was speaking about something, and I think we prayed or something like that. After one day, the thing disappeared. It has never returned. It's been over a year now. Amen. When unclean spirits are moved from your vicinity, they take the uncleanness with them. Amen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. Unclean spirits will cause you a lot of skin issues. Some of you that are watching, I dare you tonight... You will pray, say, Lord Jesus, because of the blood of Jesus, cleanse me. Cleanse me, O Lord, I beg you. Cleanse me, O Father, from every uncleanness that is upon my body. You will notice the acne will stop. You will notice the rashes will stop. You will notice a lot of these things will cut off immediately. Because you have noticed the pattern of the unclean spirit and you have attacked it. It will move away from your life. Amen. You have to remember, demons don't have a nature of hiding. Their presence will always make things go wrong. That is how you know they are in a place. They can't just be silent. They come to kill, steal, and to what? Destroy. Your health may be stolen. Your career may be clean, it killed. They, they have to destabilize something. That is their nature. So the first one is uncleanness of the skin. You can't rebuke the skin because it is your skin. You can rebuke what was put on your skin by a spirit. That spirit will not be inside you. That's why you go for deliverance and this nothing ever comes out. You don't even manifest. Because that spirit is not in you. That spirit is around you. Number two. Number two. And clean spirits will always bring unclean friends to you. And clean spirits thrive where uncleanness is because their goal is to bring you into the same nature. They have to create that environment around you in order to settle. So what will they do? They will bring you drug-using friends, foul-mouth-speaking friends, people who consume unclean content. I'm not only talking about pornographic things. People who like a violent content. They like seeing people being shot, people being beheaded. They like to watch those kinds of things. Those things make your soul unclean. You will never watch 
a human being being killed, being shot, being beheaded, and your soul is not affected. You feel, you feel some kind of, a lot of people like to watch cartel content and all this and that, that, that. That is an unclean spirit creating your, causing your soul <laughs> to relate to unclean things that are not going to put light into your soul because in that atmosphere, it thrives. Is this making sense? You'll notice you used to cringe when people say F bomb, this, this. All of a sudden you started becoming high school. It's just just words, whatever, whatever. You know, you should be so pure that when people want to curse around you, they feel uncomfortable, not because you told them not to. You just don't engage that way. The moment you give heed and you extend that, you just now allow them to start traveling around you. Their goal is eventually to enter you when you have become completely filthy on all four corners of your life. Mm. But their desire is to make you unclean. That is why God does not just forgive us. He also purifies us and sanctifies us. Because some effects of what we engage with, forgiveness is the first step, but cleansing is the next step, and purification is another altogether thing. It is three steps that every time you ask God to forgive you, he has to do. And then he requires you to repent, change what? Your mind. Why is repentance important? Because your way of living can allow it can allow your life to be a nest of unclean birds. Unclean spirits are the orchestrators of rape. Unclean spirits are orchestrators of rape. Their goal is obviously to see you in pain, but it is the long-term traumatic mindset that they will put in you. Do you know people who have been raped have higher chances to continue to be raped? Wow. This is a statistical fact. Okay. I didn't know if you guys know that. Somebody who's been raped one time is more likely to be raped more times. That spirit's desire is to render you to feel so unworthy, feel dirty, because it thrives from you feeling unworthy, with feeling worthless. That's what dirt is. That's what being unclean is. This spirit also is big time whenever people are doing sexual immorality, when, when a man or a woman starts sleeping around and doing things like that. Self-value dies because the unclean spirit's joy, the, the, the joy is to make you as worthless as possible. Are you hearing me? Many times unclean spirits make you sin against your body. Not against your soul, but against your body. They want you to do things that will be a sin to yourself. You know, there is sin to God and there is sin to yourself. Is this making sense so far? 
Whenever an unclean spirit is around you, now this one is a very strange one. Whenever an unclean spirit is dwelling around somebody, every time you go on a walk or you drive, you will always either notice dead animals, you will always notice feces, you just notice nasty things on the road. It is like it will be instinctual, you just look and there it is. You just, I'm not saying that, okay, if there is, obviously everybody can see. But you always see things that are unclean consistently, continually. That spirit is around you. I wish you would understand what I'm trying to tell you. It's a very strange thing. It's a very strange thing. Unclean spirits love dead things because whatever is dead is unclean to God. You know, even men who work in morgues and have to clean bodies and whatever, many of them need serious prayer because every time you touch a body, you become unclean. Wow. Oh, wow. The men and the women in Scripture that used to deal with, um, with, uh, with corpses and things like that, they would go through intense cl cleansing because it affects you. Not just the aspect of seeing a dead person, but touching dead things affects you. Let me show you this quickly. This will help you understand what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you're learning something. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want you to go. Mark chapter 5 from verse 1. Uh, actually, give Ruth to read here. Yeah. Mark 5, 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea and mm. into the country of the Gadarenes. Uh -huh. Continue. Uh -huh. Keep okay. going. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit mm. who, was, who had his dwelling among the tombs. Notice, where was this man's dwelling? Among the tombs. Why in dead things? Because... He wasn't just possessed by any spirit. He was possessed by what? Unclean spirits. Unclean spirits love dead things. Remember, I told you, I said this to you. Whenever you dream, it is not the attack. I know a lot of men of God teach this, but it's just inaccurate. Dreams are a realm of revelation given to all men by God. Amen. Demons don't attack you in your dream. God reveals to you that demons have been attacking you in your dream because you don't notice it. When you're awake, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a devil doesn't need you to sleep in order for him to attack you mm -hmm. because the devil is not afraid of your flesh. Mm. Your flesh has no power to protect your soul or your spirit. So why do you think the devil has to wait for you to fall asleep for him to attack you? Mm -hmm. That's not even spiritual common sense. This is a spiritual being. Why is he waiting for your body to sleep? <laughs> you will read in the whole scripture, take your Bible, you will never find a demon attacking in a dream. You will find everyone in scripture use the dreams as a revelation of the unknown 
that either is to come or what has been happening in the background. Nobody used it as a dominion of attack. It's just not scriptural. It's just not true. Imagine if Pharaoh woke up and said, oh, a demon attacked me in the night and gave me a terror whereby cows were eating other cows. Uh, Let's bind it. Let's bring wizards to rebuke it. The man knew God had spoken to him. It bothered him. He said, who can interpret to me what I saw in my dream? Notice even pagan people knew God speaks in dreams. Mm -hmm. That's true. Hey, Christians. Deliverance ministers are the worst people. I'm sorry to say, they mean well, but they use doctrines of devils to teach deliverance. Wow. I attacked him in the dream. Oh, so you attack in dreams. From that day, they use dreams as an attack dominion over or domain of a, of a demon. He just programmed you. When did you look at that in light of scripture and it made sense? A demon, even on his way out, his goal, his goal is to destroy your faith in God. The Bible says God gives sleep to his beloved. It's it's crazy to me how spiritually illiterate many are who claim to deal with demons. But here's the thing. God being so merciful still delivers some people. Amen. Even though the wrong doctrine is there, the problem is people remain in bondage. Because if your mind is not changed, it still remains in bondage. You're in bondage. You're not free. Is this making sense to somebody? Oh, my brother Daniel Adams is on. Uh, Apostle, send me, uh, send me a text with the flyer so that I can start advertising it also. Um, please, I forgot to even ask for it. So, so are you hearing me, children of God? Yes. Please hear me and hear me by the Spirit of the living God. Hear me and hear me by the Spirit of the living God. And clean spirits love dead things. When you start being captivated by dead things, be careful. And and, and, and clean spirit is around your life. That's good. And clean spirits are around your life. This is why you have to be careful. Watch your children when they just want to kill this, kill that, kill this and this insect, kill that. Be careful. Killing, 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 those kinds of things, or torturing as an animal, whatever, it is a manifestation of an unclean entity around your child. Mm-hmm. Is somebody hearing me? Yes. Unclean spirits love dead things, so they will bring a lot of dead ideas, dead desires. Love for the, that's why you find most of these people that love death metal and things like that. Even if they are clean, they look dirty because of the spirit. No, I'm just telling you the truth. It's true. <laughs> Blood and things like that. It is the unclean spirit's nature. Somebody beautiful will just look dark, even if they cleaned up and did what. It just the unclean spirit has change their way of being and what is around them. That's what pleases them. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Unclean spirits are destroyers of relationship. Mm. Unclean spirits are destroyers of relationships. I'm going to say that one more time. Unclean spirits are destroyers of relationships. Unclean spirits will always create misunderstandings around friends. In order to isolate you, 
and to have a bad taste of people. That's it. All people are bad, this and this and this. Its idea is to make you look at everything dirty. Wow. And clean spirits love to destroy relationships. And many times they use gossip to ruin relationships. Moko, moko, asi. Asi. I know, asi. Did you call him? Moko, asi. Asi, kushe. I know you want to. You're tired? Okay, call him, let him come to you. Go. Go. Free. So, they, they thrive in destroying relationships. And they are the authors of gossip. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Unclean spirits love to destroy relationships. That is why some of you, you'll be with friends. You never even thought all of a sudden they don't want to talk to you, they don't want to be around you. It's just like, yo, what happened? The idea of you is all of a sudden bad. It's like I've never even done anything to you. No gossip ever happened or anything. They just love to destroy relationships. And if the people who you're trying to create a relationship with are not men or women of God, usually it is easy for them to do that. Relationships don't last. It's the work of unclean spirits. Remember the man who was possessed by unclean spirits was busy, crying, crying. He was isolated. He had no relationship. He wasn't always manifesting a demon. He was just isolated. No one was there with him because that's what unclean spirits love to do. Unclean spirits. If you know anyone who loves to cut themselves, anyone who loves to cut themselves when they are upset or something goes wrong, that's how they deal with things. It's an unclean spirit around them. Remember, this spirit thrives in destroying your body. Can you keep reading about that man with unclean spirit? Uh And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, Uh because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the Uh chains had been plucked asunder by him. Uh And the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Mm -hmm. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Notice he was what? Cutting Cutting himself. himself. He was crying. The crying was not the manifestation of a demon. It was the manifestation of a man who has been left by himself. Mm -hmm. Unclean spirits are the ones that give you addictive behaviors. Unclean spirits will give you addictive behaviors. That is why some people can be offered drugs. They may even try it one time, they don't get addicted. And they can snap out of it. Because that spirit will not be able to create an atmosphere around them that will keep them coming back to the same thing. And there are people who try it one time and all of a sudden they cannot stop. That spirit was able to capture them immediately. But notice, what got them bound was the environment that they were in. And clean spirits love to create atmospheres where people fall into addictions. Whether it's alcohol, whether it is drugs, whether it it is whatever it may be. 
pornography or anything. You notice, everyone after they do any of these things, they always feel like nothing. That is the goal of that spirit. If you look at our society, there is more manifestation of unclean spirits than anything. I am not against um, surgeries if it is necessary. It is okay. But when you start looking at yourself and you see yourself so ugly unless you look like so and so, unless you look like another person, unless you look at like another person, an unclean spirit has created an atmosphere around you to show you that you're nothing unless you become like somebody. Yet our role model of what we need to be like is Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? then you start altering yourself to the point of no return. Now you start looking like, are, are you even human or not? Are you, understand what I'm, are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. This is an unclean spirit. Big time. Listen, nothing wrong with plastic surgery. It's just like braiding your hair. But a certain place is bad. <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, I'm, being, I'm speaking to you honestly. It can be life-saving. Some things, maybe you are born with a deformity or something. There's nothing wrong with that. Listen, these things are not bad things. Uh, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Ah, but there is a place. It's an unclean spirit's work. That when you look at yourself in the mirror, you don't see yourself. You just see ugly, bad. This, it's an unclean spirit. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Anyone who goes to do these things because they think they will be more attractive, they will be more like this, they will appeal to this, it's an unclean spirit. We are all going to age. We are all going to change. That doesn't mean don't take care of yourself. That doesn't mean don't go to the gym. That doesn't, but we change. So if lust is how you're going to get somebody, it's an unclean spirit. Is it making sense? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. The only way unclean spirits are removed from your life. Oh, I forgot one. This is important. I'm actually going to give it to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me. I'm going to give you um, this last one, and then I'm going to show you how your life can be cleansed. So that these spirits can exit your life yes. completely. Because remember, we are not dealing with something that is inside of you. We are dealing with something that is around you. Is, is this making sense? Yes. So I want you to go quickly and uh, we're going to give to God. Grab whatever you want to give to God. Thank you for all those who are supporting this work. When I come back, I will give you the most important way to know an unclean spirit is around you. This one is serious. And then how to get rid of them for good in your life. So quick, go quickly, give to God, and then we'll be back.
God bless everybody. It's your favorite duo, Mr. and Mrs. Lovie Elias. And we are excited to invite you to our first free talk on Saturday, November 11th. It's going to be a wonderful time. It will be a time of answers, understanding, wisdom. It will be a night like no other. So if you're a relationship, wanting to be in a relationship, want to know how to live a better and fuller life, this will be a night you don't want to miss. So go to ProfitLovie.com to register. Make sure you get your seat because they're going to go quick. We'll see you in the evening. God bless you. I took the leap. Somebody's heart. That was cool. It was good. Everybody treating you all right? Yeah. Hey, Dad, how does it feel like to be a man? Why you ask that question? I'm just really curious. <laughs> Being a man is like driving a car down a long road. We have different directions, different paths. There's some shortcuts, detours. But ultimately, it's about making sure that you're on the right path. You're making the best decision for you and your family. You understand? Yes, sir. God bless you. This is Prophet Lovi Elias. Hear me. Man cave is back. It's time for men to be strengthened in the presence of God. This year, it's going to be amazing. We're going to talk about fitness. We're going to talk about finances. We're going to talk about relationships. We are going to speak about all that it takes to be a man that is effective in this generation. It's going to be a two-day event. It's going to be full of speakers, and I can't wait to see you November 17th and 18th. It's going to be beyond understanding. And on the last day, we're going to have an anointing service for all men. I can't wait to see you there November 17th and 18th. God bless you. God bless everybody. It's your favorite duo, Mr. and Mrs. Lovie Elias. And we are excited to invite you to our first free talk on Saturday, November 11th. It's going to be a wonderful time. It will be a time of answers, understanding, wisdom. It will be a night like no other. So if you're a relationship, wanting to be in a relationship, want to know how to live a better and fuller life, this will be a night you don't want to miss. So go to ProfitLovie.com to register. Make sure you get your seat because they're going to go quick. We'll see you in the evening. God bless you. I took the leap. Somebody's heart. <laughs> That was cool. It was good. Everybody treating you all right? Yeah. Hey, Dad, how does it feel like to be a man? Why you ask that question? I'm just really curious. <laughs> Being a man is like driving a car down a long road. We have different directions different paths, there's some shortcuts, detours. But ultimately, it's about making sure that you're on the right path. You're making the best decision for you and your family.
You understand? Yes, sir. Bless you. This is Prophet Lovi Elias. Hear me. Man cave is back. It's time for men to be strengthened in the presence of God. This year it's going to be amazing. We're going to talk about fitness. We're going to talk about finances. We're going to talk about relationships. We are going to speak about all that it takes to be a man that is effective in this generation. It's going to be a two-day event. It's going to be full of speakers and I can't wait to see you November 17th and 18th. It's going to be beyond understanding. And on the last day, we're going to have an anointing service for all men. I can't wait to see you there, November 17th and 18th. God bless you. God bless everybody. It's your favorite duo, Mr. and Mrs. Lovi Elias. And we are excited to invite you to our first free talk on Saturday, November 11th. It's going to be a wonderful time. It will be a time of answers, understanding, wisdom. It will be a night like no other. So if you're a relationship, wanting to be in a relationship, want to know how to live a better and fuller life, this will be a night you don't want to miss. So go to ProfitLovey.com to register. Make sure you get your seat because they're going to go quick. We'll see you in the evening. God bless you. I took the leap. Somebody's heart. That was cool. It was good. Everybody treating you all right? Yeah. Hey, Dad, how does it feel like to be a man? Why you ask that question? I'm just really curious. <laughs> Being a man is like driving a car down a long road. We have different directions different paths, there's some shortcuts, detours. But ultimately it's about making sure that you're on the right path. You're making the best decision for you and your family. You understand? Yes, sir. All right, we are back, and um, I'm going to give you the last point of, um, of the manifestation of an unclean spirit around you. Amen. One of the things that unclean spirits, you have to remember that spirits primarily speak using thoughts. It is the language of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Demons don't know your thoughts. Only God knows your thoughts. Amen. But demons will speak to you because the speech of the spirit begins by speaking thought to thought, or what we call, we call what, telepathy? Yeah. That is how spirits primarily speak. I will show you an example in scripture. Jesus is speaking with, with his disciples and he was preaching, speaking about how he was going to die and all this. 
And Peter got so zealous and pulled Jesus to the side and said, Jesus, stop talking like this. You are not going to die on the cross. Jesus said, hey, walk behind me, Satan, for you do not like the things of God. What made Jesus know that what made Peter speak was an unclean spirit, was that actually not unclean, this was the devil speaking, was because Peter, because of his love for Jesus, he thought he was protecting Jesus, but the thought to fight for Jesus at that point, not to go to the cross, was not of his own, it was the devil that did that. But you notice Peter is the only one who is able to tap into this realm where he can hear spirits and he doesn't even understand that he's communicating with spirits. Wow. Wow. Jesus gathers them again. He says, who do the people say I am? They say, some say you're Elijah, some say you're Elisha. Who do you say that I am? Peter say, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus says, hey, flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, but it is my father in heaven. Peter didn't even know that the father spoke to him. Wow. It is wow. Jesus that is telling him, by the way, wow. who do the people think I am? Who do you think I am? He's asking them about a thought. Mm. Not an analysis. That's Jesus was testing their spiritual capacity. Mm -hmm. And Peter is the only one who has a thought from God the father. Jesus being God, he knew that it was the Father that spoke to him. Because that thought can only be revealed by the Father, not flesh or blood. Amen. Notice, he had two messages. One from God, one from the devil. The same person through thoughts. All right, I don't think you can hear me. I'm trying to help you understand spiritual things. Thank you, Papa. This is why it is important to guard your mind. This is why it is important to bring every thought captive that lifts itself above what? The word of God, because somebody is talking to you. And he's not talking to you to answer or to respond to them. Somebody is speaking to you so that you can do their will. Wow. Unclean spirits love to put unclean thoughts in your mind. Hello. Wow. Unclean spirits love to put unclean thoughts in your mind. You just be sitting and you, you think about, ah, been so nice if I just had like 10 women here. Uh -uh. You even stop yourself. You say, ah, how did that thought come to me? Let's be honest. Have you ever had thoughts that shocked you? Why am I even thinking like this? Yes. Yep. That's an unclean spirit talking to you. But he's making you because he's a, the spirit is aware. You are not aware that he's talking to you. So he's using it as, an, as a manipulation tool. It would be so nice right now if I could just go and steal that thing. Right? If I could just steal that. Ooh, the, Wait, what? I don't even like to steal. Why would I even want to steal? Mm. Wow. Jesus. Good. Even though all spirits communicate through thoughts, unclean spirits primarily want you to do unclean things. When you see these people raping children, how do you look at a child and find them attractive? How are you perverted just like that? That now some foolish people are trying to say it's a sexual orientation. Yeah. Me, you try it, I will shoot you. 
No, I'm serious. And then I will pray for you to make it to heaven. I will kill you. You touch a child. No, I'm serious. You touch a child? Uh, I will not spare you. But all those things are unclean spirits. They are not inside somebody. They will direct you. Then when you do the act, they will enter in. Is somebody hearing me? Yes. Who is speaking to you? Who is speaking to you? Who is talking to you? It matters to know. Unclean spirits will direct your mind to unclean things. Devils and demons will lead you to killing. You just want to go on a rampage. You just want to do this. You just want to be angry and beat everybody up. Violent acts are usually devils or demons. Unclean spirits only make you rage if they have opened doors to other spirits to enter you. You see, the unclean spirit is the one that cried to Jesus. But when Jesus asked, who are you? Notice inside that man there was this other, de- there were now demons mm-hmm. called legions. But notice, the legions are not the ones that cl- cried. The unclean spirit is the one that cl- cried. Because the unclean spirit is the one that opened the door to everybody. Wow. It's wow. usually the one, they usually love to work with, with seducing spirits. A seducing spirit entices you to something, unclean spirits enters. When the unclean spirit enters, he always brings worse spirits than itself. Let me show you. Let's finish with this. And then I'll show you how to get rid of them. Amen. Are you ready? Amen. Matthew twelve forty three. Matthew twelve forty three. Matthew 12, 43. Mm-hmm. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he mm-hmm. walketh through dry places, mm-hmm. seeking rest, and findeth none. Mm-hmm. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. Mm-hmm. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Mm-hmm. Then he goeth and talketh with himself, taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked. Notice, he comes, looks at the house, he says, okay. Then he goes and he gets seven other spirits more powerful and wicked than itself. Notice the only thing the unclean spirit did was made the house dirty. <laughs> the only thing the unclean spirit did is it came and it made the house dirty. Then when it was cleansed out of the house, it could not stay in a clean environment. So I was like, okay. Okay, the house is clean, cool. Before I come back inside... Let me get spirits worse than myself. So that when I enter this guy this time, the condition of this person will be worse than before. And they won't be able to get rid, with, uh, rid of me. Notice, unclean spirits is the, the atmosphere that even devils and demons come to work on a person. They are the ones that let everyone know, hey, you can come and dwell with us. Wow. <laughs> How do we get rid of them? If you want to know the answer, type number one. One, 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 one. Type number one, type number one, type number one, type number one. Have you ever, guys, have you ever watched those people? There are people who love to collect trash. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're called what? Hoarders. That's an unclean spirit. What are you going to do with trash? That's an unclean spirit, big time. Right to like to eat roadkill, just weird stuff like it's it's an unclean spirit. How do you accumulate trash as property? That's somebody that has been demonized big time by an, an unclean spirit. How 
how do we get rid of them? Number one, the fear of the Lord. Amen. The fear of the Lord. The angel of the Lord encompass them that fear him. Honor and respect for God creates a clean atmosphere that angels can dwell in. Amen. Because somebody has to dwell in your atmosphere. I'd rather have angels. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought I'll hear better. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. I'd rather have angels. Amen. Amen. I'd rather have angels. I'd rather have angels than anything else. When we fear God, we want to please God. I'll say that again. When we fear God, we want to do what? Please, please God. God. When we fear God, our ultimate desire is to please Him. We are driven by the passion to please Him. We are motivated by the passion to please Him because we fear Him. We would not want to engage with unclean things, unclean words. Angels love that, and they will come and, and surround you. And when they're in your life and in your atmosphere, unclean spirits cannot be around you. No. No. Number two, this is a real statement that men used to make when I was a child, but when my eyes of the Spirit were opened, it was so true. It was extremely true. Cleanliness is close to godliness. Yes. Become clean. Genuinely. Have a clean house. Have a clean apartment. Have clean clothes. Love cleanness. It pushes these spirits away. Amen. Because remember, whatever you do outside is an expression of what is inside. Amen. I'm not saying become a germaphobe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying be clean. Amen. Clean your room, clean your house, clean your clothes, clean your bed covers. L love cleanness. Demons cannot stand a clean person. They hate it. Especially unclean spirits. Is this making sense? Mm -hmm. Clean words. Words of life. Words of hope. Create an atmosphere because... Your words create an atmosphere. If you love to curse, listen to unclean music, listen to unclean this, unclean that, speak unclean this, we have unclean people in your atmosphere. You create an atmosphere and a bed for these things. Remember, we are in the world and not of it. We will engage with all kinds of people. We will be around all manner of people. That doesn't mean we become like them. Is this making sense? Yes. These are natural things we can do to ensure unclean spirits cannot be around our atmosphere. Amen. Spiritually, what can we do? If we notice there is already manifestations of unclean spirits around our life. Pray that the Lord Jesus will sanctify and purify your life. 
because of the blood of Jesus. That because of the blood of Jesus, there will be a sanctification in your relationships, in your home, in your business, that all that is unclean and impure will be removed from you. That is how you start cleansing your life through prayer from unclean spirits. When an unclean spirit is in your life, you have a terrible man, the next relationship will be your worst man. It will be like 2.0 of the same person you are with or this 2.0 of a woman you are with. It doesn't change. They bring the same kind. It will be the same person in different bodies because the unclean spirit will attract whatever is already in your atmosphere. When you are in God, you are chosen, especially for a woman. You will be chosen. They won't be brought. You will be chosen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. And if it is a man, you will receive favor because of the atmosphere that person has created around them. So prayer of sanctification and purification is important. Father, because of the blood of Jesus, let my home be purified from every uncleanness, every unclean spirit, every stain that they have left behind in my body, in my car, in my house, with my children. Some of you have done things in your cars that you, do, you should have never done. Mm -hmm. Sexually, other ways you've done things you shouldn't do. What do you think that did? Especially if it's in, done in disobedience with God, where you're not aligned by God. You just gave this place a place. You just gave these guys a place. Are you hearing me? Yes, yes. Whenever you meet people that are about to enter your life, pray that if they're impure, may God drive them away from you. Amen. If they will benefit your life, may the Lord help them to stay. But let imperfections that they may have never to affect you. And may they be changed because of what is in you. Amen. You have to protect your environment. Amen. Amen. Sage is not going to do it. <laughs> Burning some smoke. Oh. <laughs> nope. Lighting some incense with some smoke? Nope. <laughs> so this is important, children of the living God. I pray for you today that this word will enter your heart and that you will understand that it is a war zone out here, but we have been given victory. Amen. I'll say it again. We have been given what? Victory. victory. I'm going to pray with you and I believe that God is going to move on your behalf. Amen. And the Lord is going to help you. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all your people who are watching from all around the world and those who are present. Father, I pray because of the blood of Jesus, let everyone that is watching be sanctified, be purified from every unclean spirit even in this hour and this moment. Father, wash them clean. Wash their lives. Wash their atmosphere. Let that man or that woman that is dealing with that skin issue, may they be cleansed in the name of Jesus. May their relationships be cleansed. May their atmospheres be cleansed. Let whatever allergic reactions they have been experiencing, let even that be healed in the name of Jesus. May your people be restored now. May your people be restored now. May your people be restored now. Father, I thank you that it is done. May testimonies come. May testimonies come flow. May they testify. May that acne be removed from them. Those unclean thoughts be taken from them. 
those thoughts that make them see themselves ugly and attractive, may those things be taken from them even now. Father, I thank you that what you have done, you are the only one who can do it. No one else can do it. Let it be established even now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everybody said, Amen. Listen, I love you so much, but the Lord Jesus loves you even more, and um, the best is yet to come. Amen. I will see you tomorrow. May the Lord Jesus bless you. Shalom. God bless everybody. It's your favorite duo, Mr. and Mrs. Lovi Elias. And we are excited to invite you to our first free talk on Saturday, November 11th. It's going to be a wonderful time. It will be a time of answers, understanding, wisdom. It will be a night like no other. So if you're a relationship, wanting to be in a relationship, want to know how to live a better and fuller life, this will be a night you don't want to miss. So go to ProfitLovey.com to register. Make sure you get your seat because they're going to go quick. We'll see you in the evening. God bless you. God bless you. This is Prophet Lovey Elias. Hear me. Man Cave is back. It's time for men to be strengthened in the presence of God. This year it's going to be amazing. We're going to talk about fitness. We're going to talk about finances. We're going to talk about relationships. We are going to speak about all that it takes to be a man that is effective in this generation. It's gonna be a two day event. It's going to be full of speakers and I can't wait to see you November 17th and 18th. It's going to be beyond understanding. And on the last day, we're going to have an anointing service for all men. I can't wait to see you there, November 17th and 18th. God bless you.